the Leader family is proud to be a co-sponsor of this year's film festival. All of our films allow the audience to see life through a Jewish lens. We have gone green this year, so there are no programs and there are no evaluations. You're going to be getting them by email. What is unique about a film festival is that you're sitting with hundreds of strangers and sharing that experience. Our film festival has Q&A, has speakers, and so you can all share your ideas as you come out of having seen a film and experiencing everybody's ideas and having a greater enrichment and understanding of the film. You don't have to be Jewish to love our Jewish Film Festival. Since 1998, Fountain View at College Road has been the premier retirement community in Muncie, New York. Fountain View offers market rate housing with services and amenities to older adults. The 10-acre park-luck setting features spacious and fully equipped one- and two-bedroom apartments. Come and see for yourself. Retirement in the Jewish tradition. Our philosophy is in cultural, spiritual, and educational experiences for the residents. The seniors love to have a learning experience. Just because they're at a certain age doesn't mean that they still can't learn. I believe in supporting the JCC and what it stands for and what it means to other people, not just my husband and myself, but small children with their families and um, people who go to different programs that we don't particularly experience, but they get a lot from. never forget the way she sang. She is the most underrated jazz singer that ever lived. She was the star attraction. People would come to see Sophie Tucker. She was the last of the Red Hot Mamas. It goes back to 1973. Lloyd and I were in Ithaca College together, and he was the big man on campus. His responsibility was to get, to get concerts to the college. And uh, fast forward to my first date, he has he has a concert set up, but and she he didn't asked, know who I was. And I didn't know who he was. He asked big me on a shocks. date. Big deal, I'll go. So uh, <laughs> next thing I know, he takes me to this concert, and we're in the front row, and the curtains, the lights go down. And he says, uh, "Excuse me, one moment." And next thing I know, I see him walk up on stage, and he says, "Ladies and gentlemen, Bette Midler," and that was our first date. The late and great Miss Sophie Tucker. Here are her stories. In her concert, she does a whole section on Sophie Tucker. She does Sophie Tucker jokes, which are bawdy and, and raucous and not the way Sophie was. This is before, was, this is before Bette Midler was Bette Midler. Right. We didn't know who she was. But that was our introduction to Sophie Tucker. Sophie Tucker was one of the most extraordinary entertainers in American history. Her pizzazz, wit, and personality kept her in the spotlight for over five decades. An iconic mix of self-parody and racy comedy, punctuated by her jazzy musical style, became the backbone of her lasting popularity. I said, eh, I think I'll go on a second date. <laughs> Not only did we date, but we got married, we had three children. We fast forward. She's a talker. I am. <laughs> I don't get to say anything yet. No, you got to interview everybody. I get to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, how about this? Let's find out who this Sophie Tucker lady is. Let's make a documentary. We had heard through reading the biographies that there were some scrapbooks in the New York Public Library. Turns out there were 400 scrapbooks of the public library, and it's like the Raiders of the Lost Ark behind the under the tarp and behind the wall. When we started to read these things, we realized that this lady was like the Forrest Gump from 1906 
1966. She knew every single person that was in history. It wasn't only her show business persona that we saw, but it was also her Hamish Jewish, the little Jewish girl from Hartford, Connecticut, was seen through the eyes of all of these fans that she had. And these letters told us what Sophie was like. We had letters from a soldier who, when he went overseas, his favorite record was My Yiddish Mama. Somewhere he got it in his head, he was gonna beat Hitler and his boys, take his record player, and play this record in the streets of Berlin. Unfortunately, when they were miles away from victory, he got killed. They kept his record player, and when they got to the Brandenburg Gate, her record was blasted. Oh, I know that I owe what I am today to that wonderful Yiddish mama, mama. She just reached out to the everyday human being. This was the first woman in the United States to get up on stage and work blue. She did it with innuendo. My boyfriend's got the biggest dinghy in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> she was saying to the other women, I like sex too. It's not just for men. I like sex too. She left home and, and you know, she left a baby at home and she went and, and, and decided this is my career. This is what I want to do. My mother works too hard. My father works too hard in, in the restaurant. I'm going to make money for them. And so she was, she was ostracized because of that whole stigma that Jew women in show business was, was a, a taboo and, profession. And then. they were an orthodox family. Sophie Tucker far surpasses anything that we've ever expected. To radio, movies, and television. Miss Sophie Tucker. This is television. You're supposed to stand between the chalk marks. Are you kidding? There isn't enough chalk made to go around Tucker. <laughs> So join us on April 6th. We'd love to see you walk down the red carpet and have your picture taken with Sophie Tucker, or at least a life-size poster of her. Afterwards, there's a Q&A after our movie, and then there's a, a wonderful kosher dinner at the Crown Plaza. Kosher? Kosher. It's not going to be pigs in the blanket? No pigs in a blanket. Sorry, Bubby. Uh. <laughs> and all the proceeds are going to help the JCC, so join us. Because I'm the last of the Red Hot Mamas. I'm getting hot to roll the time. Thank you.